Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to a new YouTube video. Hope you guys are all doing well. In this video, I actually want to take a minute and talk about the camera that's filming me right now. And that is the Canon R5. You know, I think when we look at YouTube nowadays and just the camera market in general, it's really easy to get caught up in all the new cameras coming out, all the new features, and just everything looks and feels super exciting. And I would not be wrong in that statement. There is a lot to look forward to right now and a lot of really exciting cameras on the market. But it's interesting to think about cameras that actually stand the test of time, the ones that we actually use over and over again and how those kind of fit into our everyday workflows as artists. Now, I wanted to make a video talking about the Canon R5 because I've been using it for several years now and I've used Canon for about as long as I can remember. Obviously, I've used a multitude of other different cameras throughout those years, but I've always had a Canon by my side. And I think it's interesting to kind of dissect that and explain to you guys a little bit of, you know, how I look at my professional equipment and how this is actually used on a daily basis. So when it comes down to it, the R5 for me is just a workhorse. Simply put, I'm able to get everything that I need and more out of this thing, and it really never messes up. And that's something that I think is very undervalued in today's camera market. A lot of people really focus on these flashy brand new features and you know, XYZ, number of megapixels, whatever it may be. But the R5 to me and Canon as a whole, I would say there's a reason they've been around for so long. And they might not be innovating as fast as another camera brand, but I think in general, a camera like the R5 to me is a very trustworthy camera to bring on assignments and jobs and film these YouTube videos and that says a lot. Now specifically what I'm talking about with this camera is its ability to always work. The thing with Canon is all these cameras are just very tried and true. I use the R5 on a lot of my commercial assignments and advertising and this camera is by far my go-to. I'm not using the X-T5, I'm rarely using the GFX unless uh, I'm shooting in a slower paced environment. Uh, the R5 just ticks all the boxes in terms of being fast enough, high enough megapixel count, and an amazing RF lens selection to choose from. And all of these things I take into account when I'm uh, actually shooting with this camera. I have several jobs coming up in the next couple months and I'm gonna be using the R5 for all three of those jobs. Now let me walk you through a little bit of my reasoning behind why I choose something like the R5 over my GFX 100S or even newly my X-T5. So the first thing when it comes to choosing a camera like the Canon R5 is its durability. This camera has really never broken once. Um, I don't shoot a ton of video on this camera. I'll shoot like short clips like this for YouTube. So I don't have a problem with overheating whatsoever. Uh, I usually have the battery grip on this guy as well. So I can shoot vertical and horizontal very easily. I'm usually tethering this camera as well when I'm shooting on a job. And what that means is I have a cable that plugs directly into the camera and then the other end goes into my computer into Capture One. So everything that's shot is automatically transferred into the computer and I don't have to worry about cards or mismanaging files or anything like that. And the Canon cameras tether better than any other camera that I've tried. They work perfectly and I don't really ever have a problem with them disconnecting or not working in a certain way. Now, another thing that I mentioned about the Canon R5 and Canon in general is they have an amazing lens selection. And the Canon system to me, again, isn't super exciting by any means, but it gets the job done. Typically I'll bring along the 24 to 70, which is what I'm filming on right now, and usually a 70 to 200 and maybe a 50 millimeter or 100 mil macro. Some version of those lenses make their way onto pretty much every job that I shoot. And the R5 uh, in tandem with all those lenses works wonderfully. Uh, all the lenses are tack sharp. They have great fall off. The skin tones look beautiful. It doesn't have a ton to do with the lens, but overall, you know, Canon color science is tried and true. It looks great. Um, it's nothing like outside of the park, you know, it's, it's nothing like really pushing the envelope forward. Uh, but a lot of people don't really need that when it comes to picking a camera to take photos. Uh, there's a very big difference for me between picking a camera up just for fun and picking up a camera to do some work with. Now, this doesn't mean that I don't shoot on my other cameras a lot more often, especially the X-T5 that I recently picked up. I've been shooting on this camera more than probably any camera I've ever shot on. Probably it's slightly because I just picked it up and it's fun and it's new, but it's also just really easy and fun to shoot on. And that's something to not discredit when you're looking at what camera to use. Uh, to me, the X-T5 is much more of like a for fun camera. It's a personal camera. 
Uh, it's a camera that I bring pretty much everywhere with me besides when I am actually working. When I sit down to film a YouTube video like this, the X-T5 isn't going to be the one that's filming me. Uh, when I go out and shoot a lifestyle campaign or a higher end portrait shoot, I'm not going to be using the X-T5 most likely for that. The camera is amazing and I'm really excited to continue to push the boundaries with it. But the R5 for me, again, is just that kind of tried and true workhorse that always shows up and does a perfect job. Now, interestingly enough, when I'm looking at like the GFX 100S, for example, uh, the R5 to me still kind of reigns supreme versus that camera, especially on like a commercial set. Uh, the difference is, is how fast this camera can shoot. Uh, the R5 does not really buffer too much. It's 45 megapixels, which is in my opinion, pretty much the sweet spot for being able to blow up the files nice and big. Uh, but it's not too big that it's going to slow the camera down. It also has a CF Express Type B card slot, which obviously is very helpful. And that alone is pretty worth it over shooting on the GFX 100S, which just has dual SD card slots. Now, I am in no way saying that the R5 is you know, my favorite camera versus the GFX uh, whatsoever. I think just the R5 is better suited for the job a lot of the time. And the GFX, again, is more of a personal camera. Um, it's also a camera that you know I can bring on jobs that are much slower paced. Now this could be architecture, this could be um, a slower paced portrait shoot, this could be product stuff, uh, really anything that kind of lends itself to a slower workflow, the GFX is incredible for that. But I would say normally roughly 70 to 80% of the shoots that I get hired for, uh, especially the higher end ones, the R5 is always the go-to for that. Now something that I don't talk a lot about on this channel, but I use the R5 for a lot, is filming these YouTube videos. And you obviously don't see the R5 because it's filming me a lot of the time, but the video capabilities on this camera are amazing. The footage looks great, the autofocus is incredible, uh, the color is nice and easy to edit for me in Final Cut. I usually shoot C-Log3 in 4K and it looks beautiful. I've even shot in 1080, it looks great as well. Uh, for YouTube, this camera is more than enough. Honestly, it's overkill in a lot of aspects. I would love something a little smaller at some point to film, but the R5 to me, again, a nice simplistic approach that can do a lot of different things. Something else about the Canon cameras that are also pretty amazing is the battery life. They've always been great. Uh, if you've used a Canon camera ever, you probably have a couple LPE6 lying around and they work in every single camera. So you can have a bunch. Uh, I always charge a ton before shoot. I'll usually have like six or seven ready to roll and then you can always be charging as you're shooting. And these batteries just last forever. Uh, you can get quite a bit of images on each battery and then as you're just switching them throughout the day with the battery grip, it all just works wonderfully. Now again, I wanted to reinforce that, you know, the R5 is not necessarily the most exciting camera out there. Um, Nikon is probably in the same boat as this, you know, there's just, there are brands that have been around for a very long time. Uh, but I think when you look at that, there's a reason why that is and that's because they are trusted by professionals time and time and time again, especially on the stills department. Uh, Canon, I think, really does reign supreme uh, for the most part when it comes to reliability and just ease of use. Is it the most fun camera that I've ever shot on? No, not at all. Uh, that's why I have a couple other cameras to mess around with. But when it comes to getting stuff done, the R5 to me is just the workhorse that I need it to be. And simply put, that's all that I really need from the camera. Now, with all this being said, I'm excited to continue to test a lot of the other cameras that are currently here in the studio, but I wanted to give some love to the camera that's always filming me and the camera that's making me a living as a photographer, and that's the R5 right there, right in front of me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I know this is a little bit more of a nonchalant approach versus just talking about the exciting new cameras that are always popping up nowadays, but the R5, it deserves some recognition, and hopefully I gave it that in this video. Before this video wraps up, I didn't want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace, for sponsoring today's episode. Uh, speaking of images and photography, obviously Squarespace is my preferred choice for building a website. It's just by far the easiest way to do so. Whether you're a photographer, a filmmaker, a graphic designer, or you're selling some sort of e-commerce product, Squarespace just makes it that easy to not only start a website, but to maintain it and to kind of figure out your own design and layout choices to really make your website stand out. If you guys want to check out Squarespace for yourself, there'll be a link down in the description to save 10% off your first website or domain purchase. And thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. We'll see you guys in the next one.